Last week, I unveiled the second stage evolutions to the three starters of a hypothetical new region. Each of these starters draws from real-world animals, culture, history, and mythology to create new starter lines in Pokémon. The first stages are plenty adorable, and the second stages each have more appeal, with their designs hinting at their final stage. But after all that, the final stage is where a starter Pokémon really gets its full identity, showing a clear transformation from a simple elemental animal to a creature that's mastered its powers and even gained a secondary typing and signature moves that show off the full extent of their real-world inspirations and the powers based on them. Today I'll be showing off the final evolutions for Cactup, Ursut, and Puffet, explaining what went into the design process and how I turned these guys into complex final stage Pokémon that would be some of the most powerful in their region. In the last two videos, we met Cactup, a shy desert-dwelling dog inspired by chihuahuas, and its evolution, the curious coyote-inspired Lobuaro. Both of these Pokémon took inspiration from the American Southwest, in almost every aspect. They're inspired by the various types of canines that live in this harsh climate, paired with the one type of plant that thrives there, cactuses. I found this link to be intriguing not only from a biological standpoint, but also what they represented culturally. As I mentioned, in both Mexican and Native American folklore, coyotes are represented as tricksters and figures of death. So both in their designs and personalities, I made sure that Cactup and Lobuaro represented this idea well. The idea of being a cunning mischief maker as it grew and evolved. I also made sure that the grass type aspect of these designs progressed well, with its tail evolving from a small cactus bud to a whole stalk blossoming with flowers. So for the final evolution, I made sure to take all of these ideas into account and continue this progression. So all of that gave us Stoculent, from Stock and Succulent. This typically gentle creature roams the desert landscapes alone, typically climbing massive rock formations and drawing power from the moonlight. The flower on its tail is bloom perennially, but under the right conditions, it'll blossom further and emit a sweet scent that can knock out any target with ease. They say Stoculent have the ability to enter people's dreams, conjuring fantastical visions and even temporarily influencing their perception of reality once they wake up. Scientists believe Stoculent draws this ability from the spirit world. They typically avoid violence, preferring to use cunning intellect and supernatural strength to win. So Stoculent is a fearsome looking canine, inspired mainly by desert wolves that roam the Sonoran Desert. Design-wise, I made sure that the cactus aspect was no longer just on its tail, but its entire fur was a rugged surface like a cactus patch. It also has disheveled fur to make it look almost rabid, representing its ghost typing. I gave it that as its secondary type because of what wolves and coyotes represent in Mesoamerican mythology, with one main spirit being the Aztec god of mischief, represented as a coyote in artwork. So I think Stockholm would be a very intelligent creature that prefers to trick its opponents rather than fighting head-on, with lots of status moves, ghostly abilities, and even dream-like fighting abilities, draining the energy of others to sustain itself, much like the Mexican legend of the Chupacabra. You might also recall that I made this line inspired by Mexican depictions of death through sugar skulls, and that continues here in a slightly different way. I designed Stoculent's color palettes and bright pink spot after a particular style of Mexican artwork, Alabrie. This is a style of representing mythical beast-like creatures with vivid colors, patterns, and shapes, almost like a fever dream. It's been a tradition in Mexico for almost 100 years, dating back to when the original artist claimed to see these vivid creatures in his dreams, inspiring the art movement. So that influenced both Stoculent's design and its main behavior of using its trickster nature to influence the dreams and perceptions of its foes in battle. This influenced Stoculent's signature move, Dream Snatch. This would allow Stoculent to pounce on its target, using its cactus blossom aroma to send its foe into a deep dream-like state, giving them a vivid nightmare and draining their vitality. This would restore up to 50% of Stoculent's HP, almost like a ghost-type version of Giga Drain. So with ideas of the desert, nighttime, and mischief, I hope I've been able to round out the Cactup family well and give you a sense of what the grass line would be like if you chose them as your starter. Now let's move on to the fire line, where I showed off both Ursut, the gentle fire cub, and its evolution Brewer Smoke, the scout-like warrior that roams the forest. Both of these guys were inspired by grizzly bears and black bears in the forests of the Pacific Northwest, drawing upon their behaviors in these wood environments. But they also take light inspiration from Pacific Northwest artwork, such as totem poles and tribal artwork. Bears are often represented here as protector figures of the forest, almost like deities. I was drawn by the intricate nature of this artwork and the connotation that bears had, as extremely respected figures. So that'll definitely continue with this third evolution. I also wanted to do something unique that hasn't been done before. So I made this third evolution firefighting. I'm just kidding. What I really did was make Totemite, from Totem and Might. 
totemite are sworn protectors of the forest. They can stand tall on two legs in a totem stance, displaying intricate patterns that glow with their power. Though they were very gluttonous as young Ursa, fully evolved totemite have little to no hankering for food. In fact, they hardly seem attached to material possessions, instead preferring to gather in groups deep within the forest almost in meditative states. However, despite their typically calm and gentle demeanor, totemite have a fiery temper, and they'll go into an unstoppable rampage when they sense their forest home is in danger, employing both physical firepower and acute psychokinetic energy to vanquish any threat. So these guys are bears once again, but they're mainly inspired by totem poles, practiced down in the Pacific Northwest where respected animal figures are carved into tall cedar poles and displayed at community centers as figures of worship. These tall poles, often with eagle-like wings at the top, were the main inspiration for Totemite's signature upright form and its outstretched arms. I'm thinking that these guys would mainly be on all fours, like real bears. But when they use certain attacks, they outstretch into the totem stance and show off their intricate markings. These markings are inspired by the form line art style, present in Pacific Northwest culture. These markings are meant to make Totemite look like the living embodiment of a totem pole, and its main marking on its belly looks like an eye with a mouth below it. I'm thinking that these two patterns in light blue would glow brightly when Totemite executes its signature move, Woodland Chief. This would be a psychic move that has Totemite go into the stance, stretching its arms and blasting its foe with a psychic ray. It would also have a 10% chance of raising stats, so it's like a psychic version of ancient power. So I made Totemite a beast of the woods that holds immense physical power, but it's now gained the wisdom and restraint to use those powers wisely, earning it some psychic abilities alongside. I think Psychic was a solid choice because it represents Totemite's d deep respect and connection to its natural environment, and how it doesn't just rely on brute force to get by. Finally, let's discuss the waterline. In the last two videos, I introduced Puffet, the brave Puffin-inspired Pokemon who lives on rocky shores, and its evolution Skip Hyper, a crafty and powerful seabird who swims long distances in rough waters. These are inspired by puffins, seagulls, sandpipers, and other types of shorebirds, all species who live across the world's oceans and thrive in cold, wet environments where they can swim and dive for survival. I wanted to keep this going with a third evolution, who would be much bigger and a much more powerful bird, and probably one of the only bird Pokemon that doesn't gain a flying typing. I wanted to lean more into the secondary inspiration for this evolution line, the nautical aspect because both Puffet and Skipiper have a general maritime theme here. I styled these birds after various types of ocean explorers. For the third evolution, I made sure to give this bird a fully-fledged ocean traveler vibe, so all of that gives us Admetros, from Admiral and Albatross. Admetros are naturally fearless leaders. Their once small wings are now powerful enough to whip up strong gale winds, enough to help ships sail across the seas. These also allow them to fly long distances across them, exploring new islands in the vast reaches without getting tired. They can also swim competently, and are versed in combat. They're often seen sparring on groups on the surface of rocky beaches. Admetros enjoy fighting, and they never run out of vitality, but they also have a deep control over their emotions that allows them to make quick decisions in life-endangering situations. They use salt water to prune their razor-sharp feathers. So Admetros is mainly inspired by one type of bird in particular, the albatross. These are massive birds that are one of the largest types of flying animals, with wingspans of up to 11 feet. They can travel long distances across the ocean without stopping or even flapping their wings. So this mastery of flying abilities, while retaining the swimming abilities of past evolutions, makes Admetros a very powerful fighter, so much so that it gets a fighting secondary type. This is mainly to represent the connection to sailors and also pirates, which shows up in its design. These guys use their wings not only to fly, but also as weapons, and simply to pull a few punches when they need to. I made sure that this pirate connection was apparent in its design, where the top of its head is a crown of tufted feathers that looks like a stereotypical pirate hat. I also made this show in its signature move, Jolly Roger. This move would allow Admetros to flap those wings and cause a watery storm, dealing both water and flying type damage. In that sense, it would be like the move Flying Press. This reinforces Admetros' connection to its flying abilities, giving it some nice coverage alongside some strong physical-based water and fighting type attacks. So of all three of these final evolutions, I think Admetros would be the most people-friendly. It would have plenty of aggressive fighting energy, but its main goal is still to help humanity and use its powers to explore the sea, rather than cause unneeded violence. So with this connection to the open ocean, exploration, sailing, and pirate culture, I hope you now have a sense of what the Puffet line is like as a starter Pokemon. So those are all three of the final evolutions to the starters of this region. Each one of them, as they grow and evolve, gains a secondary type to complement its elemental one, inspired by real-world myths, legends, and overall culture. I hope I've been able to flesh each one out enough to give you a sense of what they'd be like as starters in a California-based region. 
and what they'd be like as Pokemon in general. Which one is your favorite and why? Let me know down below. It's been a ton of fun making this series and engaging with everyone along the way, and I'll be sure to create more original Pokemon designs sometime in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.